So there certainly is a difference between being a great entrepreneur and being a great family member with preserving kind of a legacy and fostering through governance right. in the generations to come. Uh, I suppose some people would position it, as you noted, with someone younger that you want to let them fall down and stumble on the grass. You may not want to let them stumble and fall off a cliff. So I guess we learn from trying, from experiences, and from collaboratively as a family looking to do what's best for the group as opposed to an individual. Right. So the, the, the other things about the, the, the next generation and families today that we found are very interesting is, is um, uh, that the next generation is a kind of a digital generation. And we talk about the millennials and how different they are. And um, families need to recognize that um, their children have some different ideas. So when a family has been extraordinarily successful, one of the challenges is, is the family's been so successful at doing what it's doing and creating its business that they, they, um, they, they don't recognize that, well, it could be very successful, but there are other ways that they could go and they need to listen to the next generation. So um, the, the, the families that are successful, they find ways to really invite and uh, bring the next generation into a, a way of learning where they get more and more responsibility and their ideas are heard. So um, the, the, and, and the, the other challenge um, I think that comes up in, in families is that the, the young person who grows up with wealth has grown up in a certain way and, and um, they, they don't really understand the idea um, that, that this isn't, that when the parents say, this isn't your money, um, and it, it, uh, they've sort of grown up with the idea that the family wealth belongs to everyone and, and they have an expectation not that they're not going to work, but that the, the wealth is something that's going to be shared and something that's part of their lives. So um, families, for example, they talk about an ethic of making it on your own. And that, that's a kind of an individualistic idea that the wealth creator who didn't have wealth has, um, you know, has kind of created something really wonderful. And he would, he um, would like the next generation to share that idea. But um, uh, young people growing up in, in wealth have a, a, a different style. And um, uh, if, if everybody is going off on their own, then how are they going to develop a common view about their business and supporting each other and helping each other? So the entrepreneur sees going off on your own as something that he or she wants to do with the kids, but the kids growing up together have to learn not just how to be on their own and how to be, take care of themselves and, and to grow and learn, but also they have to develop skills to work together as a team. So uh, next generation families, um, uh, siblings, uh, cousins growing up together, they, um, they have to learn to work together. They have to learn to become a, 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 a team. They, uh, unlike their, um, uh, their uh, entrepreneurial parents, they have to learn to be more transparent, to be sharing, to be fair to each other. The entrepreneur didn't have to be fair to anybody. It was his, his game. Um, he was running the business. It's usually um, a man, and um, that's the way it is. Um, and the next generation um, has a, a challenge to make things clearer, to make things fair. What does it mean to be fair um, with everybody with different skills and different ideas? How are uh, people going to work together? So the, um, the, the, the new generation um, has a, um, in, in the successful families, has to begin to get, first of all, to know each other, um, if they're uh, raised, if they're in the third generation, the family is a, a, not one family, but a number of different households. And so the challenge that a family faces is that, that they're not a family, they're an extended family. They're, they're, they're kind of a tribe. And uh, successful families um, have created programs where family members, cousins get together from the time that they're young and uh, get to know each other and get to bond and, and get to learn about each other so that um, when they get older, they can begin to work as a team. They're not a bunch of strangers. Um, so um, this is, this is the, the, the challenge that the um, uh, wealth creator is, is that his 
um, or her children are different and they need to learn how to work together, not just to work on their own. If you had to define an underlying theme of the 80 families that have survived the 100 years, and we in the industry know shirt sleeves to shirt sleeves in three generations, meaning that often the money greatly dissipates by the end of the third generation. Is it basically what you're describing as they need to learn how to be active listeners, how to be more empathetic, and how to work together collaboratively? Is that among the most common threads of successful families? Well, let me, let me put it another way. First of all, this shirt sleeves to shirt sleeve thing is, is a mathematical um, thing. It's not due to anybody's failure. I mean, if you have created um, great wealth for one person and four generations later, you have a hundred um, different households, um, uh, they're not going to be as wealthy as the first generation, just mathematically. And to think that a business is going to continue to produce the same amount of growth and the same amount of uh, uh, capital over three or four generations, it just doesn't work that way. So the next generations um, of successful families have to cultivate a little bit of entrepreneurship in the next generation. The other thing we find is that the, the shirt sleeve to shirt sleeve is about money. And, uh, but the, uh, the families that are successful are, are seeing their wealth, not just in terms of what kind of money do we provide for the next generation, but saying, well, we, we also provide non-tangible, non-financial wealth. We create learning. We create a shared set of values. Um, we create a social vision um, for how we want to use our wealth to further the community. And the families that are successful are looking at their, their non-financial, their human capital, how they create skills and educate the next generation, their social capital, their commitment to their employees in the community and society, and, um, and their relationship capital, how they all work together as a family and are able to make decisions and uh, um, encourage each other to do their best and um, do things together. Um, these are all the kinds of wealth that the next generation family creates.